This is my three-engined rocket called the Orion 5. And this is it meeting its untimely demise on its maiden flight in the previous video. As you can see, the damage was decently extensive, and there was no way it was reflyable in its current state. The Orion 5 is a rocket featuring a cluster of three 18mm motor mounts. I built it several years ago to prove to myself that I could successfully build and launch a rocket of this nature. It also served as a somewhat more powerful rocket to lift heavier payloads in the future. Despite my best efforts and testing, it unfortunately crashed on this very first flight. So in this video, I'll attempt to repair the damage done and fly it for a second time, but this time hopefully successfully. I highly recommend you go watch the previous video featuring this rocket, as I go into excruciating detail about everything that went wrong and the mechanism of failure that led to this crash. The bottom line is that there was an ignition failure of one of the engines, meaning the rocket launched with only two engines lit. This meant the rocket was much less stable and built up too much horizontal velocity, as well as a lack of altitude, meaning the parachute never had a chance to deploy. However, an important aspect which I mentioned in that video was that there was no fault in the ignition system itself. I had made sure to test it prior to launch, and footage from the pad-mounted GoPros indicated that all three igniters successfully lit. The real culprit was the fact that two of the motors built up too much thrust, and yanked the igniter out of the third motor's engine before it had a chance to ignite. After figuring out exactly what had gone wrong with the first flight, my next task was to attempt to repair as much of the damage sustained as possible, and get the rocket to a flyable condition again. Now, you don't need to let me know in the comments that my repair job isn't pretty, because it was far from it. My goal was to get to a point where it was robust enough to fly again, but in a short period of time since the next launch event was only in a matter of weeks. This meant no refinishing and no repainting. In saying this, I first started this process by cleaning up the dirt that was stubbornly stuck to the nose cone, since this was the first point of contact the rocket had with the ground. With a healthy amount of mineral turpentine, I was able to clean everything up. The next major issue I tackled was repairing the very top of the airframe, which splintered due to the impact. This meant that the nose cone wouldn't seat properly on the body tube. I considered a few options such as saturating this section with thin CA glue to strengthen it and mold it back into shape. Ultimately, I ended up just cutting that section off entirely, since it only constituted the top few millimeters of the airframe. Finally, it was time to bring attention to the fins and the launch lugs. For this, I made sure to identify each component and lay it out flat on a table. Here's the engine that didn't light, by the way. From there, I had a better idea of the steps I needed to take to repair these parts of the rocket. Firstly, I trimmed any excess balsa wood remaining on the airframe. I then wood glued the fins back on and made sure to add new generous fillets to most of the fins. For the launch lug and launch lug standoff that broke off, I had to remake a portion of it out of balsa and reattached it as normal. And with that, the rocket was ready for its second flight, just a bit less pretty and more beat up than the first time.
So, as you could tell, this time everything worked pretty much flawlessly. Yeah. The rocket lifted off the pad with all three Estes B66s lit, and deployed its parachute right at Apogee and landed completely unharmed. Seeing the footage of all three engines lit on the launch pad was truly a glorious sight. The only thing that was different about how I prepared this second flight compared to the first one was the use of pyrogen tipped Estes igniters, as opposed to the regular clear coat ones, that so happened to be in some motor packs I purchased. These igniters are much more combustive, and provide a more rapid and reliable ignition of all three motors. Ideally, one could coat regular Estes igniters in a black powder solution to get the same results. However, black powder is quite difficult to get your hands on, especially in countries like Australia. So I had to rely on the limited stock of Estes manufactured ones for this flight. Now, for obvious reasons, I still wasn't comfortable flying my altimeter 3 on this flight, just in case history would repeat itself. However, this rocket reached an estimated apogee altitude of 200 meters if anyone was curious. Now, on the way up there still seemed to be some corkscrewing during the motor burn. This slightly less than straight trajectory can be explained for a few reasons. Firstly, this rocket has quite a low stability caliber at liftoff at around 0.76 due to the extra mass of the three engines. This value certainly improves as each motor burns through its propellant, pushing the center of mass forward, but it remains a contributing factor. Then there's a the variability in thrust output in each motor, which can be upwards of plus or minus 10%. Finally, aerodynamically speaking, this rocket has pretty beefy launch lug standoffs to accommodate potentially large payload bays with larger diameters. With the Orion 5 successful flight out of the way, I moved on to once again launching my now very reliable Falcon 9 kit. Um, No. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. And this flight was also very successful, although it would be cooler if it could possibly land. That sounds like an original idea that no one has tried before. Now to finish off this video, I'll say that I'm very pleased that I was finally able to get a successful launch with this rocket after this much time. However, it might be one of the last times it flies. I originally built it, as I said in the introduction, as a technology demonstrator for myself, and then as a rocket which can lift heavier payloads for experiments, since it was more powerful than any of my single 18mm motor rockets at the time. However, this comes with the downside of it having a high cost per launch, and it's shown to be not the most reliable vehicle. It's much simpler and cheaper to use a larger motor on a slightly larger rocket to achieve a higher mass budget, which is something I've already managed to do, but I can't disclose that just yet. In saying that, let me know if you'd like to see some more Orion 5 content in the comments below, and maybe I'll reconsider this and fly it a few more times. Thanks for sticking to the end, and keep an eye out for my next video where I launch my two-stage Orion 6 model rocket, so consider subscribing if you don't want to miss that. Until next time, see ya!